Hello YouTube and thanks for watching. Today we're going to look at two more great Tanganyikan cichlids. We're going to look at Neolamprologus lulupi and Julidochromus transcriptus. We're going to be looking at two different species today in the same species profile and that's because I've got them breeding in the same tank. In the filming it became very difficult to differentiate between the two fry. Um, they're very intermingled in the in the tank so and both species have very similar needs so it was fitting to go ahead and address them both in the same video. Being that both of these fish are from Lake Tanganyika, they're going to need a pH somewhere from 8 to 9. Mine is at 8.6. The temp in the tank needs to be somewhere, I would say, from the mid-70s to low 80s. I keep mine right at about 80 degrees. Plants are optional and typically are not used in a Tanganyikan setup. However, I really do recommend that you try to incorporate some sort of plant life in there. It will really help filter the water and keep a stable environment for your fish. There are uh, certain plants that you can use that will do well in a cichlid tank, not all, um, but if you're careful in your selection you can you can be successful in keeping plants with your cichlids. As you can see in this tank I have quite a bit of plant life growing along the back wall of the tank. This gives the fry uh, a place to hide. It helps filter the water. Now, with either of these fish, you can keep them as a pair or in a tank as small as 20 gallons. But if you're wanting to keep a couple pairs or a community of fish, I would really recommend something 50 gallons or larger. They are territorial and need a, a space to claim in order to be happy. Both cichlids enjoy plenty of rock work. For the lulupi in particular, I would suggest a sand substrate. They really enjoy digging. The Julidochromus, in my experience, don't really dig. Instead, they find nice cave systems in the rock work and, and stick to it. Now let's focus on the Neolamprologus lulupi real quick. They are known by several different names in the hobby. Sometimes they're referred to as a gold cichlid, or uh, most common that I've seen is a lemon cichlid. The brighter red variants, uh, line bread variants, are known as firecracker cichlid. There's also a line bread Dutch orange cichlid and a super bright orange cichlid. Uh, they are a mainstay in the hobby for the last several decades and will probably remain so due to their bright coloration of both the males and females and they're quite a hardy fish. They have a very wide distribution in the lake um, with collection points on both the eastern and western shores. Most range from yellow to orange but there are two other color morphs that are very occasionally seen in the hobby. One is a silvery, kind of silvery brown coloration, and the other is um, sort of a really muddy black uh, coloration. The ones I have here are from a collection point called Bulu Point. They are known for their uh, dark mustache, as you can see on the male here. In the aquarium, the lupi are generally peaceful but they can get aggressive, especially with their own kind and while breeding. In my experience, however, if you provide them with an area to, to claim, a territory to claim, they will stick to it and pretty much leave the other fish alone as long as they stay out of his territory. As far as tank mates, as you can see right here, they do great with Julidochromus species. I would also try maybe Calvus, Altolamprologus Calvus, or some Cynodonus cats. With Lulupi, it's a little difficult to distinguish males from females since they have the same coloration. But over time, you'll be able to tell because the males get uh, quite a bit larger than the females. As you can see here, my male is easily twice the size of the female, if not more. And these are both from purchased at the same time, same size at purchase, um, 
grown out in the same tanks together under the same conditions so you can see how much larger the males do get uh, sometimes the males start to develop a cranial hump. I think my guy here is uh, might be starting to develop one. He's got a also a much fuller body and longer pelvic fins. At a young age, really the only thing you can do is is vent them to to identify them. But as if you have patience and time to grow them out, it'll become obvious in time. When these guys breed, they are very uh, secretive cave spawners. I've seen batches of fry and have never have yet to see any eggs. Um, I can tell by their behavior that they're guarding eggs, but I've yet to see them myself or any breeding behavior. Um, both sexes will dig out caves, as you can see. They're they uh, are constantly moving the sand around and making new caves and and uh, and such. But the female will generally meet, lead the male over to her cave and that's when she's ripe with eggs and that's where she'll deposit her eggs you can tell you've got a ripe female because she'll be a lot fuller down in the abdominal area once you have a pair and they do start laying eggs you can expect broods probably as small as 50 to begin with but as they age and and get more experienced you'll uh you could see broods up to about 250. The eggs hatch relatively quick in only about four days. All the while, the female generally stays back and guards them. After they hatch, though, the male and female kind of take turns in and out of the nursery while the other one feeds. So far, mine seem very tolerant of multiple spawns. I've got a few different size fry in here who've come from uh, batches you know a few weeks apart and I haven't seen any aggression as far as the parents pushing them out unlike Neolamprologus brichardi which we spoke about in our last video these guys are pretty solitary in the wild they come together for about a month to spawn and raise the fry and then they go their separate ways now, a little bit about the Julidochromus transcriptus. This fish is also known as the masked Julie, and I've seen it referred to as the black and white Julie from time to time. These guys are only found on the northwestern shores in the rocky habitats of Lake Tanganyika. They, they form monogamous pairs that can last quite a long time under the right conditions. They are a cave spawner, similar to the Lulupi. However, instead of digging out caves, these guys will find existing caves that you set up for them in the, in the rock work. Now, once a pair decides on the cave system it wants to use, it will become very territorial of that rock work, but will rarely leave it to bother the other fish. So, as long as you're careful and give them a good place to call their own, like we've done here, they generally won't venture beyond the rock work to harass other fish. Now the Julidochromus are different from the Lulupi in that the females of this species are the largest. The females will grow to about three inches with males being about three quarter of that size. Females are also quite a bit more robust. The males generally have more of a torpedo type shape. Unfortunately, my male in this tank is being very shy and I've been unable to capture him on camera. I believe there's another batch of eggs in there that he's probably staying in and guarding. Uh, neither one of them are venturing out of the rock work, hardly at all. Now with this species, the parents seem to protect the fry up until about an inch. Once they reach that size, they generally run them out of the cave work to make room for more fry. If you're going to raise them in the same tank, that's the time you really want to go ahead and pull them out before any aggression might start. Now both of these fish have a very similar diet in the wild. They are predatory. They prey on invertebrates, uh, aquatic insects, copepods, things of that nature. So if you just make sure to provide them with a good high-protein diet, you should be successful with them. 
I haven't found either one to be a very picky eater. They eat a good quality flake, uh, as well as brine and mysis shrimp. That brings up another point. With the lalupi in particular, you really do want to make sure you do include some sort of shrimp into their diet. Um, it really helps bring out the yellow and the orange in their coloration. Also, if you will keep them over a lighter color substrate, their color will really be much better. When you have them over a dark substrate, the fish tries to blend in a little bit, and sometimes the yellow becomes real muddy looking. All in all, both these fish are quite hardy. If you give them good, clean, stable, hard, warm water, and plenty of rock work, they should breed for you. Well, that's about all I have for you this time. Thank you for joining me. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you next week.